servants of the Blessed Ones. For these reasons, the Bodhisattva never strays away from the Buddhas. Question. Conditioned Dharmas are deceivers, unreal and do not merit belief. How then can one hope never to stray away from the Buddhas? Answer. In order to become Buddha, it is necessary that merit and wisdom be fulfilled, and a fortiori not to become separated from the Buddhas. As a result of sins accumulated during innumerable kalpas, beings do not come to realize their aspirations. If they gain in merit, their wisdom is slender, and if they cultivate wisdom, their merit is slender. This is why their aspirations are not realized. The Bodhisattva who seeks the body of the Buddhas must cultivate two patiences. 1. Patience in regard to beings. 2. Patience in regard to things. Cultivating patience toward beings, he experiences the feelings of loving kindness and compassion for all beings, he destroys the sins committed during numberless kalpas and he gains immense merit. Cultivating patience toward things, he destroys the ignorance relating to things and acquires immense wisdom. Once these two cultivations are joined, how could his wishes not be realized? This is why, from lifetime to lifetime, the Bodhisattva does not stray away from the Buddhas. Moreover, the Bodhisattva is always happy to recollect the Buddha. When he leaves one body to take up another, he always gets to meet the Buddhas. Thus a being who has cultivated lust and whose mind is weighed down takes on the body of a lustful bird, such as a peacock or a duck, etc. A being who has cultivated hatred is inevitably reborn among the poisonous species such as wicked dragons, raksasas, centipedes, venomous snakes, etc. The Bodhisattva himself has no ambition for the fate of a noble Kakravatan king or human or divine happiness. He recollects only the Buddhas. This is why he assumes the forms to which he attaches the greatest weight. Finally, the Bodhisattva always practices the concentration of the recollection of the Buddhas splendidly. This is why, wherever he is reborn, he always meets the Buddhas. Pratyutpana Buddha Samakavasthita Samadhi Sutra. Thus it is said in the Pan Cheyu San Mei. The by what karmic cause and condition does one get to be reborn in that field? The Buddha answered. Son of good family, by always practicing the concentration of recollecting the Buddha and ceaselessly thinking about it, one gets to be born in my field. 2. Subjective nature of the appearance of the Buddhas. Question. How does this concentration of the recollection of the Buddhas bring about being born in that field? Answer. Recollecting the Buddha is to meditate on his 32 major marks and his 80 minor marks. On his golden-colored body, on the rays that shine forth from his body and fill the ten directions, on the clarity and purity of his brilliance like the molten gold of the Jambu River. The Buddha is like Sumeru, king of the mountains, in the middle of the great sea, which, at the moment the sun shines on it, illuminates everything. During this concentration, the yogin loses the notion of other colors, the colors of the mountains, earth, forests, etc. Dash semicolon. In space he sees only the bodily marks alef the Buddhas, marks like an appearance of molten gold in the center of a real beryl. A bhikkhu who has entered onto the meditation on the horrible sea only bloated bodies, putrefied, torn apart, finally seeing nothing other than a skeleton. This skeleton is immobile. It comes from nowhere and it goes nowhere. The bhikkhu sees this skeleton by means of his memory and as a concept. In the same way, the Bodhisattva Mahahasattva who has entered into the concentration of the recollection of the Buddhas sees the Buddhas insofar as he has concentrated his mind and insofar as his mind is pure. When a person whose body is adorned with ornaments looks into a mirror or clear water, he sees all his ornaments without exception. In the mirror of the clear water, there is no real form but, since it is clear and limpid, the person contemplates his own image therein. 
from the very beginning, the dharmas of Buddha are eternally pure and it is by means of his well-purified mind that the Bodhisattva sees all the Buddhas at will. He questions them about his doubts, and the Buddhas answer his questions. Hearing the words of the Buddhas, the Bodhisattva experiences great joy. Emerging from concentration, the Bodhisattva has the following thought. From where do the Buddhas come when I myself have gone nowhere? At that very moment, he knows that the Buddhas have come from nowhere and that he himself has gone nowhere. Once again he has the following thought. Everything that exists in the threefold world has been manufactured by the mind. Why? It is insofar as I have thought in my mind that I have seen all these Buddhas. It is by means of the mind that I have seen the Buddhas. It is by means of the mind that I have created the Buddhas. Mind is the Buddhas. Mind is myself. And yet the mind cannot cognize itself and does not see itself. Clinging to the nature of the mind is fundamentally ignorance. The mind itself is deception and comes from ignorance. By separating from his deceptive and erroneous nature of mind, the Bodhisattva penetrates into the true nature of things, namely, eternal emptiness. The Bodhisattva thus obtains the concentration of the recollection of the Buddhas and wisdom about the true nature, the emptiness of things. By the power of these two factors, he comes to never be separated from the Buddhas at will and according to his wishes. In the same way that the Garuda, king of the birds, furnished with two wings, soars supremely in space. So the Bodhisattva, in his present lifetime, by means of the power of concentration and wisdom, is able to pay homage to the Buddhas at will and, after his death, he is able to meet the Buddhas again. This is why the Prajnaparamita Sutra says here that the Bodhisattva who wishes to never be separated from the Buddhas must practice the perfection of wisdom. End chapter 45